All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Dragonlands. This is a guild that is my pet project that I've built by myself. Now, when I say that I built it by myself, it doesn't mean that I didn't have any outside help at all. In order to build a guild by yourself, you're going to need a place to spend guild marks. Guild marks are going to be a huge deal and you're going to be getting massive amounts of them. So I had guilds behind me supporting me. Um, Apex Alliance and Old School Gamers both let me uh, spend guild marks at their guilds. So you're going to want to have a place that you can spend these guild marks, at least until your guild is high enough that you can spend them at your own guild. So let's get into this. This guild is going level 20 right now. As you can see, 13 days. Um, I built this guild by myself. It's taken a year to build it, and you can't really build a guild any faster than that. And the reason for that is because the production plots can't keep up with how fast you build the guild. So no matter how full your coffers are, you can't upgrade unless you have the food, stone, um, lumber, or metal in order to upgrade. And I've run into a problem the entire time. Either food was a little bit low or the, uh, the stone was a little low. And we'll get into that here in just a minute. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into the buildings that you need to build in order to upgrade this. And this is going to be a very streamlined guild. You're not going to build any other buildings than what I'm showing you in order to get to level 20. And that this is going to keep it so that the shards that you're spending on your guild will be low enough that you can do this and continue with the way that I'm showing you. And it's a fairly easy way. So over here is the lumber yard. This is one of this is what you're going to be building first in the guild. When you first start off as level one, the lumber yard is the first thing that's built. So after you've built the lumber yard, you're gonna go and you're gonna build the farm. The farm is right over here. Once the farm is built, you can upgrade to two, and that is going to make it so that uh, you can start building your other productions. So here's the farm. The other production plots that you're going to be building are going to be the mine, and you're going to be building the quarry. We're going to swing by those buildings real quick. And while we're discussing that, after you've built those two production buildings, the next building that you're going to want to build is you're going to want to build the store inside your guild. The store is a key element, and you're going to want to have that upgraded with the guild the entire time. And it also counts as one of your buildings. So here's the mine. Let's head on over to the quarry. And get on over to the quarry, and once you've built the store and you're feeling pretty confident about yourself, you're going right along, your guild's going great, you're going to need a warehouse in order to start holding all of the stuff that you're doing. This is the quarry. So the warehouse is going to come up on the production plot right over here. We're going to swing by that real quick. And once the reason why you need a warehouse is because you're going to be producing a lot of shards. You're going to be getting a lot of certificates for your uh, influence, dark gifts, frozen, uh, all that stuff. You're going to have a lot of it. And your guilds, if you're doing it as fast as I did, your guild's not going to have enough space to hold everything that's in your inventory unless you have a warehouse. So build a warehouse. That's going to be one of the next, that's going to be the next building that you're upgrading with you the entire way. So about the time that you build the warehouse, I believe that the next thing that's going to be coming up is a boon plot. Ignore it. Don't build a boon. Stay away from the boon plot because it's going to be sucking the life out of you in order to get all the influence for that boon plot and for upgrading your guild. Once you've got a good rhythm, you know how you're doing it, you're going good, great. Go build your boon if you want it, but you only need two boons in order to get to level 20 with this way that I'm showing you right now. Next thing you're going to be building is you're going to want to be building the mill and you're going to want to build the smithy. So these two production plots are going to up the production of your metal and your lumber. So you build those two buildings and you upgrade them with you the entire time you're going. 
The next pot you're going to be having access to is this guy right over here. Now, this is a special plot. It's going to give you access to either another warehouse or it's going to give you more production plots like, say, another farm, uh, lumber yard, mine, or quarry. My suggestion is that you build either a farm or a quarry here. And the reason for that is because you're going to be running into a problem with food in the beginning and you're going to be running into a problem with stone at the end. Once you decide on the building that you're building here, that is the building you're going to be taking up with you all the way to level 20. All right. So the buildings that you do not want to build is you do not want to build an animal pen and you do not want to build the masonry's guild. The reason for this is that those guilds are very expensive to upgrade. They cost a lot of shards in order to upgrade and you don't need them to hit level 20. So stay away from them. Now when it comes to your boon structures that you're going to need towards the end or in the beginning, whichever way you decide to go, uh, you're going to want to build the um, you're going to want to build the stable. It gives you a speed boon, and the speed boon is great. Everybody loves it. Now, the next guild that you're going to want to the next boon that you're going to want to build is either the Explorers Guild or the Mercenaries Guild. And the reason why I'm saying or is because they take the same shards to upgrade, and so you're slitting your throat if you make both of them. You're cutting off your supply of shards that could be going into another building for you to upgrade to 20. So, personally, I would pick the Explorer's Guild because it makes you double uh, it makes you double everything out of your Explorer's cases. So, let's go on over and I'm going to show you how to make your diamonds because you are going to need massive, massive, massive amounts of diamonds in order to build your guild. So, as you're getting your guild marks, you're going to be spending your guild marks on these guys right over here. So come on over to the store and you're going to be picking up the Explorer's case and you're going to be picking up uh, Caverns and Hot Now. Now the reason why you want to build, want to get these two cases is because these two cases, the stuff out of them sells the best. The Hot Now case, all three of the things sell. Uh, we have Alum, we have Nitri, and Salt Almanac. All three of those sell really well on the market. Alum sells the highest, and then the other two. Now, the Caverns case. The Caverns case, you want this one because the gold ore sells really good, but the other two don't. The nice thing about that is that you can take the concentrated residium and the slacked lime and put those back into the guild for your professions. So there you go. That's how you make diamonds from your guild marks in order to continue upgrading guild. Now, we've covered pretty much everything, uh, all the buildings that you need to build. Now, let's start discussing on how you get the stuff you need in order to do it. You're going to be using your guild marks on the Astral Diamond Exchange. You're going to go over here, and you're going to put in a bid for, look at that, 500. 500 is what you're going to be buying them for right now. And you're going to be buying these in 5,000 blocks. Now, even when it shows that there's nothing for sale here, you just go over here and you see at 499, there's 102 requested. So say that was still 500 at 102 requested, you'd have your Zen in about a day. So don't even worry about it. Just put in your request for it and then just leave it and forget about it. Because your Zen is not going to be something that you're using right away, but you're gonna to wanna to be stacking it. So once you get your Zen, you're gonna come on over here to the market. And once you get to the market, uh, you're gonna be going to Strongholds and you're gonna be buying the Stronghold Chest of Power. A stronghold Chest of Power go on sale about once every month and a half to two months. They are also always on sale during the 40% off sales. And the 40% off sales happen in summertime during the summer event on Black Friday and right about now every year. So keep that in mind if you're saving up a lot of Zen and one of those dates is coming up, you're probably going to want to just wait for the 40% off sale and then buy as many as you possibly can. It took me about 1,500 of those in order to upgrade the guild. It sounds daunting, but if you're saving your Zen the entire time and you buy them during the 50, the 40% off sales, it really isn't that bad. So, 
The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need certificates. So you're going to go on over here to the trade house and you're going to type in whichever certificate you're needing at the time. Dark. Boom. There they are. There's a bunch of dark certificates for sale right there. So you can get your certificates this way by purchasing them off the market. Or if you're feeling like you're wanting to gamble a bit, you go to stronghold packs and you click that button and boom, you got stronghold packs right here. Now, the bad thing about buying the stronghold packs is that it's a gamble. You are going to get either two or four certificates out of these packs and if you only get the two, then it's not going to make up for the price of the pack that you paid for. But if you get, say, some of the higher level certificates and you just resell them on the market, you could make your money back. But I have never made my money back by taking certificates out of these things. You have to sell all the certificates in order to make your money back, usually. I've sold all the certificates and still lost money. So this is a gamble but it is another way that you can get your certificates so the packs that you're going to want to buy is the lost the port or the darkened night and the reason for it is because you have a chance of getting at least four certificates out of those packs the other ones only offer up to three so see two of three so that takes care of all of your dark tyranny uh, your surplus equipment, all that stuff is taken care of in those. Now, the only other things that you're going to need when you're building your guild is you're going to need gold, you're going to need gems, and you're going to need astral diamonds. Astral diamonds is really easy. You don't have to take them out of your pocket in order to put them in your, in, into your guild. You're going to take those astral diamonds from your professions. If you have a level 70 professions, you can just make the astral diamond boxes and stuff them right into your guild. Great way to do it. I haven't put any diamonds straight out of my pocket into the guild the entire time. That is the only way I've done it. Now, gold, on the other hand, is a harder one to do. Gold, now that they've changed Neverwinter, is a little bit harder to come by. So the way that I've been making guild gold now is in my professions under alchemy, I make the level 30 heal potions. And then I sell those right back to the vendor get gold from those. You can make about 15 to 25 gold a day per character. So if you've got multiple characters, you could be making, you know, 100, 200 gold, depending on how many characters you got doing it. So keep that in mind. That's a great way to get your gold now. Gems, on the other hand, is a little bit problematic because you used to be able to make gem boxes and you can't make those anymore. So the way that you get gems now is still pretty easy. You just go on up to the Astral Diamond Market, you go over here, you hit rank seven and boom rank seven enchantments pop up they're cheap you buy them you buy as many as you need in order to upgrade your guild you stuff them all in your guild and that's it that's all there is to it that is how you build a guild and that is how you build it in a year by yourself and this is not the first guild i've built this is actually the second guild that i've built by myself so I do have a little bit of experience doing this, and uh, like I said, you're going to need support guilds helping you out in order to spend your guild marks, especially when you're first starting off. Later on, you can do everything yourself at your own guild, but at least until you reach level 10, you're going to need a higher level guild in order to spend your guild marks at. So that was my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and let's cut out with a view of the actual guild hall itself here at Dragonlance. Thank you for watching my video. Shout out to Apex and Old School Gamers again. And if you like the video, hit like. If you don't, don't. I hope everybody has a great day.